Okay class, today we are going to be illustrating and creating a leaf collage. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the leaves and with marker because I want you to be able to see it with the video. But I want you to start with pencil first um, so that if you make a mistake, you can fix it. Okay? Now a collage is something that overlaps each other. And um, so some of your leaves that you're going to draw are going to be in front or in the back or coming into the picture. But we do want to leave some background, okay, and make sure that it has a nice composition. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to look at my iPhone at some leaves and show you just a very easy way to draw leaves and make them up on your own too, okay? Um, So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to do is draw the center of the leaf. And then using the contour lines, or the outside shape of the leaf, I'm going to draw kind of making the edges look a little bit rough and zigzag lines, but I kind of went out, then back in. Remember that all leaves are going to look different, they're organic. And so now I'm going to draw the veins in the leaf, and again try to get some of those lines in your leaf to be thick and thin. Take your time. I'm going to go a little bit fast just because I want to get in a hurry to start showing you how to use the watercolor. Okay? So there's leaf number one. Well, I've got a lot, a lot of leaves to still create in this collage, so I'm going to go ahead and make another leaf. This leaf is actually going to be coming onto the paper. And it's good to have a, an eraser in case you make a mistake. You can fix it, adjust, adjust it, and get it the way you want. Okay. Leaves have a lot of different shapes. There could be leaves that look almost like a teardrop. And bring those lines out again. And so my collage is really starting to take shape. I can draw some smaller leaves that are not even underneath a leaf, but just kind of floating around, flying in the wind. And I'm going to draw, let's see here, I'm going to put a leaf over here. I'm looking for any kind of space that will create a nice composition. So I'm going to put a leaf right here. And this leaf is kind of thin. And I can always go back and work on drawing some more of those thick and thin lines later. To make the drawing a little bit more interesting. 
but at least you're starting to understand. I, I should probably draw some leaves coming off and on the paper in different areas, but I want to go ahead and get started with the watercolor. Now I talked to you about complementary colors. Those are colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So if you decide to paint your leaves in the normal color of the fall colors, the oranges and reds, then I want your background to be blues and purples because that's the complementary colors that are on the color wheel. They're across from each other on the color wheel. But if you decide that you want to reverse that and use blues and purples for the leaves and use the warm colors for the background, then that's perfectly fine too, okay? So you can do both. Now, my composition really isn't done yet. There's a lot of negative space over in this image here, here, and over here, but I'm going to stop at this point and show you how to start the watercolor because some of you might get a chance today to actually use watercolor, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get dip my brush in the water Okay, and I'm going to start to fill in my leaves. Keep the watercolor very watery, okay, because watercolor is meant to be transparent and not opaque. So use a lot of water and a little bit of color. Now, you can always blend other colors in it also. Stay with the warm colors if you're going to use the warm color theme or the the oranges in the leaf because then your background you've committed to blues okay and purples but again like I said you can do the reverse and you can do blues and purples for the leaves and the warm colors for the background okay now I'm gonna let that dry and I can also create some really nice textures by pressing down on the leaf too and let it dry and then I can go back later and add some darker values okay so now it's time to go to the next leaf and maybe the next leaf is going to be more of a dominant orange so again put your colors down but spread it with a lot of water first we're going to go back later and add those darker tones The nice thing about using a permanent marker is the marker lines don't smudge. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going to start to play with the designs of the leaf. So I'm going to go back now and mix a little bit of a, a darker red and orange, maybe even a little bit of brown. And I'm going to start to put it inside some of the veins of the leaf. So now we're getting the beautiful dark and light values of the reds and the oranges. But I've allowed the lighter watercolor to dry. And that's important. Keep it watery. Use the tip of the brush. And you'll be fine. If you get a chance to start watercolor today, you're going to put your work in the drying rack when you're done. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And then I would go ahead and work on this leaf. And I'm going to mix more browns, trying to find different warm colors to put in my leaf that maybe are different from that leaf. And again, allow some of the lighter colors to come through so you have dark and light values. I can still go back over into this red leaf some more with some darker values, but the paper is getting wet, so I'm going to let that paper dry a little bit, and then I can go back into this leaf and add some darker values. 
If you use the wet on wet technique, what's going to happen is that some of the watercolor will bleed, and that's okay, but you have to understand that eventually you're going to have to stop because you're not going to have a lot of control with the watercolor. What I'll be looking for, and when I pass out how I'm going to my grade sheet, I'll be looking for you to have the ability to create dark and light values in the leaf as you start to color and be able to understand complementary colors. Also, to be able to create, draw these leaves out in a collage format and composition, creating balance so that there's no open space in one area, that the picture seems to flow. Also, I would recommend large leaves, some small leaves. And I'll pass out a handout with a lot of different beautiful pictures of leaves. But this should get you going now. I don't think that we're going to have much more time than maybe to draw out the leaves today and start the watercolor. So I'm going to stop with part one of our leaf collage design and complementary colors. Bye for now.